almost looks like a uh, train is that a train layout table yeah okay of all things to find that is a ho scale train layout platform you can see the rails on there Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new Abandoned Adventure. Joining me once again today is Matt and Jess. Coming to you from a pretty interesting location. It's a location that actually has multiple abandoned houses. There's at least a half a dozen of them. And the unique thing about them is they used to be staff quarters for a private school. They've been sitting here empty, vacant, abandoned, decayed, graffitied for a number of years. But they do have open window and door policy. So we're gonna go inside check it out and see what they look like. So if you want to, come along with us and we'll check it out together. Are you afraid of the dark? Are you scared? <laughs> so we've got garage doors here entering the basement. Yeah, really bad musty odor. I don't think we're going to find anything too appealing in here. It's just going to be the, the shell of the house pretty much, but we will uh, investigate through and see. Yeah, here's the garage. It has the uh, fluorescent light fixtures. Got a pretty, pretty modern electrical box here. Looks like there are attempts to board it up, but as you can see, it's not successful. There appears to be like a little crawl space. Any Christmas stuff or toys? Keep your eyes out for it. Here's like a little utility room. We got pencil sharpener here, old school. It's like a gas furnace. It's walking on piles of sheetrock. Let's go up to the main level. So that brings us to the kitchen here. It's definitely dated and I would say has maybe a 80s feel to it, 70s or 80s. Got the range top here. And the kitchen sink is still here, that's surprising. Nobody took the, the faucet or the spout. Got the built-in oven. And you can tell at the ceiling, the paint is just hanging down, almost like leaves off a tree. Brings us into a living room with an actual fireplace. A little mantle there, built-in shelves. There's a chandelier, which was probably hanging somewhere. Just loads of graffiti. Carpet's actually in decent shape, surprisingly. Baseboard heating. So there's the, I believe, a front door. Closet with some spiders. Let's go upstairs. It's almost like a bi-level house. And they're all very similar. There's actually a third level, too. This hurt something. Someone in here? Yeah, I heard a noise, I don't know what it was. So you're looking out, there's the next house over there. 
And again, it's very similar to this one. So I don't think we're gonna check out each and every house, but we'll certainly go through a few of them. It's a bathroom, tile floor, tile walls, the old medicine cabinet. So yeah, I mean, it's decent. It's got, you know, everything you would need for a few people to live here. Oh. Bedrooms are hardwood floors. Not the biggest rooms, but... It is neat though how it's layered and it's like three different levels. Let's go upstairs one more time and see. This is, I guess, would essentially be like a finished attic. So you can see the angle of the roof here. Closet space, leftover paint cans. Another bathroom too. I think there's at least three bathrooms here. So I would have had multiple people living here per house. There was actually some liquid in there. Green tile. Look at a shower head too. That's not what you see nowadays. It's got like three separate heads on it, and the paint is just flaking off. Oh, there's like an unfinished attic up here. This is actually much bigger than I thought it was going to be. So this, the way this house is built, it's like in different layers and levels. So we're on the top level, but this is an unfinished area. It can be used for storage, obviously. Almost looks like a uh, train. Is that a train layout table? Yeah, okay. Of all things to find, that is a HO scale train layout platform. You can see the rails on there. That's a bit unexpected. There's looking above the finished area. Looks like it's open out there. So here's the last room that we didn't get to check out. This is a, probably one of the larger bedrooms. Looks like the thermostat would have been there. I have to say, same thing that Matt said is that inside is much larger than you would think from the outside. It's actually different levels, multiple rooms. I think three bathrooms are counted. So it's actually pretty spacious, pretty spread out. And you know the way it's built, it's just, different levels. It's different, but I actually like it. It's pretty neat. Well, here's bathroom number four. And this one's a, yeah, it is a full bath. It has got a shower. It's actually completely tiled. It's actually a really nice shower. White tile on the top, blue on the walls, blue on the bottom. Now the plumbing is gone, but it's still still intact so four bathrooms in here that's pretty shocking we're behind the second house now and we did find it christmas lights they're actually out here on the tree so we could say it's officially abandoned and yes this did require us to bike here too so we do have our bikes which we're taking from house to house so upon walking in the second house here, there are some rather interesting items left here. It does say 10 milliliters methanol, 
ultra pure blank water and some vials but this house as you could tell has sustained fire damage we're not going to go through much of it here you can smell the burn smell in here we did check the fire extinguisher it's 2005 but yeah this is um pretty bad There's a sofa there in the garage. So it's pretty much identical layout of the other house. So we're gonna move ahead to a more safer one because this one, we don't know how bad the floors or walls are and just to play it safe. And since there are others, but we just want to give you a brief look inside of here. Behind the second house we came out of is a remnant of a type of shed or something. And it's got a couple interesting things in it. It's got a little, I don't know, it's like a type of wheelbarrow cart and then a pull behind trailer. Looks almost like a little U-Haul trailer. And all the wood and everything is just covered in tons of nature's carpet. Yeah, that looks like it's probably worth saving. It's in decent condition. Could be, uh, repurpose as a yard ornament. There's a good layout. We're in the uh, back section of the houses here. Now Matt did say there is a landscaping company that does come here in the summer to cut the property, to cut the grass, keep it maintained. But the houses themselves are just kind of left to the elements. One or two of them are, you know, I guess you could say sealed up. There is plywood. You could tell people have been inside. There's broken windows, stuff like that. So we're not going to risk getting hurt going through a window or anything like that. But there are more houses, including further in that direction. But we do have a shed right here that has, I believe, a bicycle. Yeah, there it is. Two of them, all all 10 speed and a mountain bike. So we got a girl's Silver Ridge mountain bike and a pretty classic looking 10 speed. I rode one of those as a kid. They were rather difficult. Next grouping of homes. This one, unfortunately, has sustained some damage due to probably lightning hitting it. This one does resemble more of the first house that we checked out. It does have an open window. Over there, that one has an open door. And there is another one right there, which may or may not be open. So we're gonna see which one we can get into. Probably just do one more house and then uh, wrap it up from there. We're back with the two car garage and the open door. So we'll check out this one. Oh, we are, got our gracious host here. Kind of a old school thermostat. A three tone coat room. Without kitty litter brand cat box odor can be a crying shame. <laughs> That's the furnace room. It does smell really musty in here. Let's try one more time. No power. Yeah, this is very similar to the first house. Oh, look at that spider. Holy crap. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like spiders or not, but there's a pretty good size one there. Oh, we got a Sears catalog. Let's see. There's got to be a date on here. Look at that. Oh my god. I think we ruined the painting. Circuit City. I remember that store. 2002. See the wood faucet handles. This one's in a bit better condition than the first house. 
minus the vulgar graffiti. This one, yeah, looks like a, almost reminds you of like a library room. This one's in definitely better condition. <laughs> Built in shelving, the mantle, fireplace. This is a good size room too. You see the, everyone, someone stripped all the copper for the baseboard. It's a little chilly in here. Let's turn up the heat. There we go. Put it 70. Oh, we got cult activity. Well, better you than me because I don't want to get it in my hair. So, yeah, very similar layout, multiple bathrooms. This one, different color tile. There's sink. Far better condition, which is nice to see. Now, look at it. See you later, Captain Crunch. Oh, this one's hot. Somebody put up to 90 in here. I'll tell you what, if it didn't have the graffiti, it'd be in really great shape. Oh, yeah. There's not much decay. I think you might look at how this is in worse shape, yeah. Mm hmm. It's another bathroom. This must be the master room. Oh, my closet space. And we got another level to go up. Of course, there's doors everywhere. So here's the finished attic part, which is on the opposite end, again with its own bathroom. These are pretty decent houses. I'm pretty impressed. cedar closet for the keep the moths out yes yeah, so I learned from you guys cedar closet keep the moths out of the clothes I think I got corrected on that about 5,000 times here's the unfinished attic which is still a usable space it's pretty spacious There's a foam from a mattress up here. Got the chimney. Yeah, I, the layouts are not what I'm used to, but again, they are done in a way that's very practical. You know, it's just really able to spread out. Here's looking over the second floor, so that's kind of more like somewhat usable space as well. All right, I think we got about everything here, so uh, I'm gonna head outside, so I'll see you out there. All right, just like that, we are back outside and we are gonna wrap things up here. I just want to thank these guys once again because they knew about this location, even though I was vaguely familiar with it, they were able to get us access here with the bikes and knew a little bit of the history about it as far as being uh, housing for staff of a private school as to when they were built we guesstimate around 60s and 70s if you guys have anything that stands out that could maybe help determine that feel free to let us know other than that though these couple of houses here are all pretty much identical they're in little grouping groupings of three here's a total of what nine was there about nine of these houses everything else here though it's not posted it's just partially sealed up partially decayed and the future is looking pretty bleak. They most likely will be destroyed at some point and this area will be probably developed into something commercial so we're, at least we were able to document it and we did it respectfully. So I want to thank you all you guys for watching and for joining us on this adventure and until next time I'll see all of you in the next video.